Hi, I'm Beryl, and in today's episode, we're doing another trying foods that I don't like. I'm somebody who, if you've noticed, tends to like pretty much everything. I need to get in there with my hands. Yes. Oh, dang. Yeah. Yes. But there are a few foods that I don't like, and I've asked you guys to help change my mind. We've done this with liver. Yo, wait, wait a minute. We've done this with cantaloupe. And now we're doing it with bitter gourd. In general, I would say that the world is divided into two types of people. Those who also don't like bitter gourd and those who just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> so let's start with this. This is bitter gourd. It is a gourd that grows on a vine. It's found in the Caribbean, in Asia, and in Africa. It is bitter, thus the name bitter gourd. This plant has a couple of names. You'll hear it called bitter gourd, corella, bitter melon. It's always the same thing. This kind of slightly spiny, viney plant that doesn't taste good. <laughs> The first time I had it, it was in a juice, and I think a lot of people might have the same experience as me. It is, ugh, it is so intense. But the thing is, is that this gourd has tons and tons of health benefits, which is why so many moms push it on their kids and try to get them to eat it all the time. But I still don't like it. The artist today is Alexandra Sherman. My dad actually loves her art and sent it to me, and here she is. She says that she's inspired by nature and a lot of her work uses watercolors and collages. I'm leaving a link to where you can follow her and check out more of her work. Okay. Ooh, bitter gourd. Hello everyone, I'm Morini and I live in Colombo, Sri Lanka. The dish I'm bringing to you today is what made me like to have bitter gourd and it is the fried bitter gourd salad. So in Sri Lankan food culture, bitter gourd is treated as a gourd despite of its bitter and not so appealing taste because of its medicinal properties. It's a rich source of antioxidants and fights against inflammation and also helps to manage diabetes. So almost all Sri Lankan moms, including mine, tries to sneak in and incorporate bitter gourd into their children's meal because we all hate the bitter taste and we refuse it. Usually Sri Lankan cuisines are based on rice, so this salad is consumed as a side with other curries such as dal curry, chicken curry and etc. This dish is not a unique family recipe, but I guess it is one of the most common ways of making bitter gourd here in Sri Lanka. My mother used to make this dish all the time because that is the only way I like to have bitter gourd and she really needs those nutrients included in my diet. I think what makes this dish different and unique from other bitter gourd dishes is the combination of flavors in the ingredients such as the tanginess of lime, the acidity of tomatoes, the fishy taste of moldy fish, and also the saltiness. I think it really helps to balance out and hide the bitter taste of the bitter gourd. So Beryl, I hope you enjoy and love this dish. Thank you. Okay, Sri Lankan fried bitter gourd salad. When in doubt, deep fry. I agree with that sentiment. Well, I just ate a huge green chili, so there's that. Oh my goodness. Let's do another bite. I don't see any green chilies. Actually, this isn't bad. There's a lot of other flavors going on in here and I don't feel like it's that bitter. I mean, I do feel like you deep fry anything and um, all the flavor just becomes good. I'm like on the lookout for green chilies right now. Yeah. I like this. I could eat this easily. I am eating it easily. This reminds me of some other kind of similar chots that I've done. Even the YY chot that I did. You just replace the YY noodles with bitter gourd. I mean, it's probably a lot healthier. Although, with it being deep fried, I don't know. 
I think that like you still get like a little bit of that bitterness, but nothing that I think is troublesome, like at all. Visually, these little rings are pretty cool looking. Yeah, it's not bitter. You know, soaking it in the salt water with the turmeric might have helped. There are a lot of ways that people have to get the bitterness out. I feel kind of bad. Like the very first dish I try, I'm like, yup, it's good. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. Don't worry, guys. There's still time for me to not like something. <laughs> okay. Let's do the next dish. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm from Malaysia. Even though you said you don't like Pitagor, I just think that you haven't found that dish that uses it in a way that you like. Yong tau fu or niang tau fu literally means stuffed tofu in Chinese, but it's actually a variety of vegetables stuffed with fish paste. Yong tau fu is quite a common dish uh, in Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, it originated from the Hakka people in China, and uh, as we immigrated from China, we brought it over to Malaysia and Singapore. The main attraction of uh, the fish paste is the bouncy texture, and then uh, it's uh, savory and tastes like fish, of course. And then it's complemented by the ingredients that you stuff it into. So there's a bitter gourd that is a bit al dente, and uh, the bitterness complements the saltiness. And then there is uh, tofu puffs which soak up the soup that you use. And there's a soft, creamy eggplants, there's some spicy chili. It's all this uh, variety of texture and taste that make this dish delicious. The bitter gourd provides nice contrast to all the flavors in this dish. Uh, but I do admit that a lot of people don't like bitter gourd and it's more of an acquired taste. My family do make it at home and uh, we all gather together to uh, help to stuff the fish cake into the vegetables and uh, it's quite common to find it in hawker centres or restaurants but of course the homemade version is much better. I do like bitter gourd. I think it's a very unique ingredient and it provides a nice contrast in whatever dish that it's in and it has quite a refreshing taste in my opinion but I do admit that it's quite an acquired taste and not many people love it and but it's not a dish uh, an ingredient that you eat on its own and you always pair with something and it's a combination that makes it work okay so this is the young tau fu from malaysia i cannot believe that i've made my own fish paste does this look like fish Talk about going way outside my comfort zone. But I did it. I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if this is working. This is a big piece of bitter gourd. Oh. <laughs> it's too bitter. It's too bitter. The flavor, okay, let me, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have, um, I did eggplant. That's good. Ooh, my fish paste tastes good. Okay, that is delicious. The bitter gourd is not. I don't like it in this. Should I try again for good measure? Ooh, mm-mm. I don't think it balances. Ugh. I like feel it in the back of my throat. My whole mouth tastes. All right, let's do the tofu. Mmm. Yum. Everything else in this dish is amazing. Just not the bitter gourd. The flavors of this are really, really nice. The fish paste is not overwhelmingly fishy. It actually, you can kind of taste the white pepper that I put in there, which is really nice. I feel like it is like a very well-balanced dish. The eggplant with the fish paste is really good. The tofu with the fish paste is really good. I would say that this dish is delicious. The bitter gourd, wah. Hi, 
My name is Sadie Marie and I'm from Rotterdam, the Netherlands, but my family is originally from Suriname, where today's dish will be from. The dish that I would like to share with you today is called gevulde soppelpel, which translates to stuffed bitter melon. It's a bitter melon stuffed with minced meat in a tomato sauce. Suriname is a Caribbean country on the north coast of South America, and we have a very diverse population there, which is reflected in our beautiful cuisine. We have Afro and indigenous influences, as well as influences from India, China, and Indonesia. So they've all come together on this small part of South America and created this beautiful culture and cuisine. In Surinamese culture, the use of bitter vegetables aren't actually that uncommon. We use them in our foods to eat, but we also drink them as juices or teas, as they are packed with nutrients and have great health benefits. I remember when I was younger and my mom would make me drink this sip just to stay healthy and it was the worst thing ever. Before you start cooking, you need to prep the bitter melon by cutting it into 3-4 to four inch pieces, hollowing it out and leaving it to rest in some salt water. Then you boil them and add some sugar to the water. All of this to offset as much of its bitterness as possible. Then you take them out and you stuff them with the seasoned minced meat, you fry it up and you put it in the tomato sauce. That's all you need and then you serve it next to some white rice and you enjoy it. The flavor of this dish is actually still quite bitter. So I'm not sure if you'll like it on the first try, but it's something that has to grow on you as you go. As a kid, I definitely didn't like it. Like no matter if my mom, my aunt or my grandma made it, bitterness just wasn't for me. But now that I'm older and I've tried it more and more, I'm starting to appreciate it as the softness of the meat really nicely complements the bitterness as well as the spice of the sauce. And it just all comes together in this beautiful dish. I hope that you enjoy cooking and eating this dish and I hope that you will open up your kitchen to even more of the beautiful Surinamese recipes that we have to offer because this is just one out of many, 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 right? Okay, stuffed bitter gourd from Suriname. And I have to admit that I actually didn't originally know where Suriname was in South America. So I'm gonna show all of you guys in case you also didn't know. It's located here next to Guyana. This is a big, beautiful world, and I'm the first to admit that my geography is definitely not up to par, so I am learning a lot. So thank you guys so much for allowing me the space to learn. Back to Bitter Gourd. It smells amazing, and I've tasted this sauce. It is so delicious. Like, it's a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, Honestly, it's like a great red sauce. I'm just a little bit apprehensive because we have another huge, big, thick piece of bitter gourd to eat. It has the bitter taste, but the meat is really good. Okay. I like it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I like this. Honestly, this is, I love it. If you can't find bitter gourd, but want to try this, use a zucchini, stuff a zucchini. It'll probably give you something similar. The flavor of the bitter gourd in this is really subtle. Like it's there, but it's not offensive. Sadie Marie, all right. I literally ate everything. This is why you need to just be open to trying foods because literally you never know. Hi everyone, my name is Joanne and I live in Philadelphia in the United States. Um, for today's dish, we're gonna talk about kalunji from Guyana. So my parents are from Guyana. It's a small like South American country that's right above Brazil, but then it's in between Venezuela and Suriname. And this dish, I like to think it's another excuse on just another way to eat curry because the main ingredients of the dish are what we call karaila, which is the bitter melon, shrimp, and then it's basically all mixed in, like you curry the shrimp and then you also make karaila curry almost in coconut milk. So I just think it's another way to eat curry, which I absolutely love. In Guyana, there's 
a lot of cultures that combine. There's influence from China, Africa, India, the Portuguese, the British, and also the native people that live in Guyana. One of the cool things about Guyana is that every culture and every ethnic group partakes in everyone's culture. So I don't know if this dish is necessarily like a combination or if it's something that's specific, but I would say that Karyla is a very popular ingredient that everybody would eat. Um, Kalanji is a dish that I've only had maybe like once or twice in my life. It's not something that we in my, you know, immediate family get to eat super often because when you're living in the United States or anywhere that's not your like home for my parents, it's hard to get ingredients that taste or are exactly the same as what they would get in Guyana. So this isn't something that I've eaten a whole lot, but I like it. For me, it just tastes so good. Even if you don't like Karyla, you like Kalanji because it's curry. Okay, so normally I cook these in one day. This, however, took two days because in the video that I watched about how to make this, when the person put the coconut in, there was a lot of milk. My coconut did not have that much milk. So I had to go out and um, get coconut milk, which probably wouldn't have been a big deal, but then like I broke the routine and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I don't wanna cook anymore. So long story short, well, it was just to say that I, I needed to buy coconut milk. Anyway, um, here we go. The bitter gourd is very bitter still for me in this dish. Okay, wait, let's just get the shrimp filling out here. Cause this, yum. That shrimp filling is so good. It's like, you know, I'm surprised that the bitter gourd is bitter still because it got cooked a lot. Ooh. I would like this with um, zucchini. You're getting obviously like a lot of coconut flavor. The problem is just that like the bitter gourd in this for some reason is still just very bitter. You know, bitter gourd, why you gotta be so difficult? I'm really learning that stuffing gourds is probably something I should be doing more of because I like it. I mean, not the bitter gourd, but I like the stuffing part of it. Okay, onwards and upwards. Hello there, how are you? My name is Zur. I live in Perth, Western Australia, but I was born in New York City, Philippines. If you're not a fan of the vegetable bitter melon, then maybe us Filipino can help you with that with this humble yet tasty and palaya dish. Ginisang palaya, or stir-fried bitter melon, is a popular vegetable dish in my home country. I always say this to my non-Filipino friends whenever they're trying bitter melon for the first time that once you overcome the bitter taste of the bitter melon, then you'll be okay with any bitter obstacles in life. In making of this dish, you must always soak the sliced bitter melon in salt and lukewarm water for at least 5 minutes until the vegetable is al dente. I'm not quite sure how this dish came about or where it came from. However, I know this dish is quite common across Asia and every culture and family has their own recipe and methods as well. Growing up in the Philippines, vegetables were a staple because my family could barely afford meat. To feed 6 children in a household, my mom would often make us stewed vegetables with coconut milk or stir-fried vegetables such as this one. The ingredients are relatively cheap as they can all be grown and picked from the garden. When I was younger, I too was not too fond of this dish because I was addicted to sweets, <laughs> like any other kid. However, you will have to learn it the hard way if you have a Filipino mom like mine. But really though, the flavor of Guinness and Palaya tastes nostalgic. And in Visaya, before we start our meal, we say, Mga onata, if you're with your family, but if you're just by yourself, you say, Mukha on ako. <laughs> All right. I feel like I've now had bitter gourd cooked so many ways that the fact that this was just sauteed, I don't know. Here we go.
It's bitter, but I've had more bitter. Whoa. I like this. I think it could use a little hot sauce and it's not to change the flavor, just to add a little heat, you know? I'm confused because I feel like I didn't do that much, maybe soaking it in the salt water. Like there's like a hint of the bitterness, but honestly, I like don't mind it at all. It just has like an interesting flavor to me. I, uh, yeah, I like it. Huh, confusing. I feel so healthy right now. Wow, 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 wow. Who is she? Who is this girl? Apparently loving bitter gourd. I'm eating my words. I'm eating my bitter gourd. I'm eating my words. Hi, my name is Nimra and I'm from Pakistan, but I currently live in Glasgow, Scotland. The dish I am going to be talking about today is called Gorilli Ghost. Um, it's typically prepared with sauteed onions, some lamb meat, bittermelon, some yogurt and some mixed Asian spices. Um, we've been eating this dish in our family for generations and like for as long as I can remember. I feel like a lot of people shy away from bittermelon because of its bitter flavour and it's just not pleasant to eat if it's not prepared in the correct way. But my family uses salt to wash the bitter melon and that takes away a lot of the harshness from it. So when it's made in the curry it sort of adds like a sweet flavour once mixed with the spices. And with the lamb you cannot tell that it's bitter melon. People are so surprised when we serve it to them. Um, they're like it doesn't taste bitter at all. It actually gives off like a sweet creaminess. So yeah, we love eating it in our family. Typically we eat it with fresh chapatis with a little bit of butter um, alongside with some mint and coriander chutney that tastes really nice as well. I feel like this combination of spices and the preparation using the bitter melon just makes the most amazing curry and I hope you all enjoy it as much as our family does. We have made it. It has been a long week of eating so much bitter gourd, just so much, but it's been positive. So. We're finishing off with a Pakistani lamb bitter gourd dish. We're ending with a bang. Oh my God. This honestly, I can't even actually taste the bitter gourd because the spices are just so beautifully developed on this dish. This is so good. Let's get some lamb. I cooked the lamb perfectly. The dish overall just has a really nice texture and the bitter gourd is still a little bit crunchy. So it differentiates itself from the sauteed onions and tomatoes, but it's still soft. If I didn't know any better, I wouldn't even know there was bitter gourd in this. Rajit. Come here. You don't like bitter gourd. I don't. Right, so just try this because I think that you would like this. I know, just try it. I honestly think that you will like it. Mm. Come closer, come closer. Say it to the microphone. It's still bitter, but it's good. It's still bitter, but it's good. You heard it here first, people. We have converted the ultimate naysayer of bitter gourd. I'm an easier convert, you know, like I, I begin wanting to like everything. Overall, this was obviously quite a successful episode. My mind has definitely been changed. We do have one more food that I don't like left and it's canned anchovies. So if you have a recipe that you think will change my mind, leave it in the comments. I will go through and we'll do that one. A big thank you to everybody who submitted recipes and uh, I will see you all in my next video.